I mean, it's a lot, but it's so worth it. And it's so cool, and I think this is such like an unforgettable experience for all of us. And I'm just glad I get to do it with these guys, because I couldn't imagine doing it with anybody else. Yeah, soak it all in, because based on your strength of your performances, I think all four of you have big, long careers ahead of you. And you'll think back when. Remember on that panel that guy told me? <laughs> so, I, you two are like my standout characters in this whole thing. Like, Emotionally, uh, your attitude, like, Susan is a boss. Thank you. And she is. That means so Max, much. Max, you remind me of a, a young Judd Nelson from The Breakfast Club. <laughs> yes! 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 Thank you! That thank is you. So, I want to know where this is coming from. Like, where are you guys channeling this, this, these characters? <laughs> John Bender. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, immediately, I knew that. Immediately. <laughs> Uh, I would say I just like tried to get into I mean the comic books obviously the comic yeah. books are the best you can get source material is amazing but I would also channel like you know sci-fi heroes like I would try to get some Katniss Everdeen determination I can see that. and like you know how they do a lot of woods action scenes I would try to channel some of that and then I kind of brought a bit of myself into Tiff and tried to make her my own while still staying true to the comics so yeah yeah, I, I agree. The comics were definitely a wonderful blueprint, and the script, they're so well, they're so beautifully developed, each one of these characters. So just following that in itself, you know. Well, you two definitely bring it to life very well. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Being that this is your first series, was there anything that, that surprised you, or did everything surprise you, the way production's all coming together? What, what was the one that you think, you think back, man, I just didn't know it was like that to make a TV show? I would say the like hours, you know what I mean? Because we're kids, so we have a cap. We have nine hours max, and that's including school and lunch. But I mean, the adult actors would be there past that most of the time. Uh, the crew loved the, the first episode because it was like, I, I know when I'm going home. But um, it was just, I would say that, and then this was my first time being at like the ground floor of a project, and I loved seeing how it progressed over the stages. Like I, got, I, like, I got to see all of the new script edits and every new revision that was made, and it was just really cool to see how it grew and how we grew. I would say the thing that surprised me the most when when filming is the Chicago humidity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, really, I, I'm. I, I would say just just seeing how I, I've, in terms of an adaptation, just sort of seeing how each one of one of like Cameron, how she handled it. She, I remember she kept the comics in, in the trailer, and I thought that that was really sweet. You know that she has that right there to look back on if she. So I would I would probably just see say how each one was handling taking their character and infusing it with uh, outside influences or just crafting it for themselves, you know? What's a characteristic what's a characteristic that your character has that you share? And what's a characteristic that your character has that you would like to have? I would say I really and Tiff share that like thirst for knowledge. Like Tiff always wants to learn more. And I think we both share that. I'm gonna have to think on the second question, so you go. Okay. Um, one thing that uh, Mac and I have I think more differences than we do similarities, but one similarity that I think that really stands out would be our senses of our sense of humor. I think we have we have similar sense of humor and um, so I would say that would be kind of our strongest similarity as far as differences something of Mac that I, I hope that someday I can obtain would be she's very stubborn however throughout the show she maintains sort of a roll with it quality and she easily adjusts to the situations that she's thrown into and I really I hope that I can I can adjust to things as quickly and and smoothly as she does I really admire Tiff's enthusiasm and passion for the things that she loves. I would love to have that one day because hers is just on another level, man. It's like she is so passionate about technology. It's crazy. 
you have some uh, adult actors that do a fantastic job on the show as well. And being that this was, you know, your first series, did you uh, was it, were you looking to them? Maybe not necessarily going to them and asking advice, but were you looking to them in terms of how they handle themselves, uh, the stress of the long days and whatnot. Well, um, for me, this was not this was not my first series for me. However, just any time you work with with a, an actor of their caliber, I mean Nate and Ali and Edina and Cliff, they're just you learn so much from them just by being in a scene with them. You know, so for me, it would just be they they elevate anything that they come near. This was my first series as a lead, but not my first series. But it was amazing because I wouldn't even have to ask. I would just look at them and I would learn something new at each glance. Like they carried the way they carried themselves, the way they would prep for a scene, how they would stay in character even after they called cut to make sure they still weren't rolling. Like it was little things that really made the show what it is. And I feel like learning from them really elevated the show, like Sophia said, to a new level. I want to talk about your individual characters because both of you, well, you particularly, you go to a very, very dark place in this story. And you, you have a very uh, argumentative moment with yourself. And I want to know where did you each go to get to that place, specifically you? Because you go to a really dark place at one point. Where is that challenge? From? Right. I would say that I, I really just, I just let it affect me. In, in the moment, I did my. I was uh, brought up in the Meisner technique, so living truthfully under imaginary circumstances. I would just do my preparation and just let it sink in and let it affect me. And just however it comes out is how it comes out. And just taking the time to understand the situation really, really helped with that. Getting to that that dark, dark. It's almost a relief as a as a person watching because you're so tough. And then when in that moment it's like so I wanna commend you on that. Great job on that. Thank you. I would say I pulled from what I would do in those circumstances and definitely from the comics because Tiff is this very complex character and the argumentative moment with herself, I had to think, what would I do? Would I be okay if I did not like this? What? Let's not be so understanding for a moment. Let's be very combative and let's be very defensive over your beliefs in this one moment. And I really do from that. Yeah. Great job. Great job. Thank you. You are fantastic. It's such a fantastic yeah. job. <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs> Can you talk to us about uh, your role in the show and how you became a part of it? Um, my name is Adina Porter. I get to play Primus in Paper Girls. And um, I auditioned. You know, they, they, it was during COVID time, so I got an email saying that uh, you know, put yourself on tape for this particular role. Um, I don't believe that I got a script beforehand. I was not aware of the amazing comic books, the paper girls. Um, and, and I try not to do too much research before the audition because I don't want to freak myself out about what everyone else has done. Like when I auditioned for True Blood, I had no idea that Alan Ball had just won the last game. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and I was intrigued about how uh, Pyrus, when she changes, when she changes time. Um, she adapts to whatever time she happens to be in to make herself at home and to make her victims and people that she's working with at ease so that, that you know, she's not from somewhere else and so she's a bit of a chameleon which I thought was just like how much fun to play and um, my callback was also on Zoom and uh, excited, excited to get the job and it was also in the middle of COVID so it's like, yay, <laughs> yeah, now you've done some genre stuff before. You mentioned True Blood, Dina, uh, obviously uh, The 100. You've also done very human series, Newsroom, obviously comes to mind. Paper Girls for me is a, a bit of a balance of it too, right? Can you talk a little bit about making sure you balance out with right? I mean, especially her moment at the end, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, where it, mm -hmm. it makes her more human. We can relate to her more as opposed to the badass she is at the beginning. Right? Um, 
I, I, I love the fact that uh, this is a story about young women. Can I be the fact that we're talking about young women in their menstrual cycles <laughs> and, all the, and all the things that go along with that? I have an 11 year old daughter, you know, so I was just thrilled about that not being a taboo subject, but, but something that, you know, half the population goes through. Um, uh, and, and, and if one has an opportunity to meet themselves years from now, <laughs> you know, uh, um, so in that way it is very, very unique, you know. Um, I think it's funny still that the 80s and 90s are throwbacks to me there yesterday. You know, I'm sure I'm growing a piece of clothing that I've owned since then. Um, but yeah, it's it's about these young women coming to age and and all the trials and tribulations that they go through. Um, and 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 if you're following or, or chasing people through time, you cannot help but also think about what you would have done if you were these young girls. And you know, this happenstance happens to you. You know, on uh, one day after Halloween. So then I have a question. You mentioned, you know, this is a coming of age story for young women. What is the one thing or a couple of things that you hope young women take from this series as they're watching it? Right off the bat, make sure that you uh, can get any particular job that you can get, you know what I mean? Like if, if, if uh, in our story, it's, it's paper boys that are becoming paper girls. It could be, you know, uh, trying out for the football team, you know, or if you're a guy trying out for the cheerleading squad, you know, not being... Um, uh, being put into a box by any particular gender role, you know, so there's that, you know, I, I love the fact that there are um, three-dimensional um, Asian characters, you know, that are, you know, because it's sometimes, you know, there's white people and everyone else is just kind of like the funny sidekick or whatever, and I love the fact that this is not the case in Paper Girls. Um, what else? What else? Um, I guess just I love these women, these young girls discovering who they are when um, when, when the going gets tough, and I guess also Pyrus, who she discovers she is, because you can just be a soldier that follows along and does exactly what your commanders tell you to do, right or wrong. That happens sometimes, and then you know you get you get charged because you happen to be what was it like in Brussels? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's somebody who's 102 years old who was just arrested because he was uh, uh, a soldier at a particular concentration camp. So it caught up with him eventually, just following orders. Um, so. Um, yeah, Paper Girls goes through this amazing journey of self-discovery uh, and, and pushing the boundaries um, uh, over different times. Yeah. Talk a little bit to us. Let's go meta. Let's go behind the scenes, right? Okay. Because it is very much a story about generation and you know what you choose. The you know the old guard doesn't want time to change, and the young guard does. You're working with a brand new generation of actresses who very impressive. Very, very, very. They look to you as a, a mentor asking for advice what was that like sometimes their parents were not them I kind of forgot that they were um, children I remembered when it was like okay we gotta take a break because you know their union rules they can only work for this many hours that's the only time I remembered that I was working with children um, they were incredibly professional knew their lines didn't play around um, or if they did it was for a second and then got right back up into uh, getting stuff done so that no money was wasted because of any childishness. Um, I'm also going to say I'm not going to give advice because the way that I built my career kind of doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> You know, they don't have to wait for an agent to discover them. You know, they can put them their their stuff online, and and the world comes to them. So, 
you know, people weren't asking for my opinion because um, it, the rules have changed. I guess the only thing that the parents were kind of asking about, um, because I, uh, I, I guess I can be approachable as well as beyond grateful that I have been able to rediscover or re reinvent myself. Yeah. Beyond grateful to have that opportunity and and and, and, and to do that in this project as well. Um, yeah, and, and you know, I, I like to do my own thing. And um, yeah, not too many people ask for too much. Advice. Uh, I have a question. So, in reverse, being like one of the few adults in the series, is there anything that you took from this ensemble of young women? You know, I gotta accept the fact that I'm the adult. <laughs> you know, just accept it and and being the elder and 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 uh, embrace it. Um, but I can tell you, since we've been working together, you know, just this weekend, I am beyond impressed with the answers that these young women are giving. Um, uh, hope for the future. <laughs> yeah, hope for the future. Um, and then also just enjoying the moment, you know? Um, we've got good stories to tell our grandchildren what we did during the pandemic. <laughs> Door and there was the 14 year old version of you. I would hug her. <laughs> I would hug her and I would say, You're not going to believe this. But in a few years, people are going to pay to have your butt, they're going to pay to have your lips. Um, walk proud, hold your head up high. Because um, I, I wasn't given that message enough. Because the people before me weren't given that message. So I'm just going to tell her that, um, hold on to the bell bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and that's all we have time for. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so very, very much.